Hi everyone, this is Bobby from BN-Games.com and we're here doing another classic capture. Today we're playing Char's Counterattack. Mobile, no, Mobile Suit Gundam Char's Counterattack. Char's Counterattack. Char, Char. Uh, you'll have a you'll have a mob on your hands. Um, this is an import copy for the PlayStation 1. Um, I actually picked this up for five bucks at one of our local import stores. Um, it is a fairly old game and the fact that it shows 20th anniversary on the PlayStation 1 game, I didn't realize Gundam was that old. Uh, yeah, no, it's even older. Uh, when I was in Japan, it I forget what the anniversary was, but it was when they uh, unveiled the statue. Um, but yeah, no, Gundam dates back quite a ways. Yeah, um, it, as you can probably tell <laughs> if you're a fan, this is a real long shot from the newer series like Seed or Double O. Uh, the art style, the models, and everything. Should mention that uh, <coughs> Char, as Timmy would say it, uh, Counterattack is actually a movie, um, which is well, Timmy, you can explain. Uh, it's w pretty much the ending of the original Gundam series. Um, I haven't seen it myself in a long time, but just like this intro, kind of you know shows the just a time frame between when they first started the war to the newer it's like this flashes to the new type Gundam versus the original Gundam uh, it's there's a lot of history about it a lot of you know animosity between the two characters Am Amuro and Char um, never quite played this game because it never really came out in the US uh, well, this one didn't, for sure. This yeah, is, well, no, this, this, is this one only. didn't. Ah, uh, no. But no, in most of the original Gundam games never quite made it here. So uh, now he's, now except he's for, like, Journey to Jaburo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this right here is just a whole little glorified sequence um, showing the timeline, like Tim was saying. Um, it is, um, it is a fighter. Uh, this is really what this game is. It's not... Um, it's not like later games where you're actually like an action adventure kind of game. It's actually a fighter. You, you fight almost one on one. Although you have sometimes multiple, you, you're you're usually locked down one person or one enemy, and you're fighting them. Uh, we're gonna show a little bit of the story mode, um, the first uh, first battle you do, and uh, it is a uh, if you get motion sickness, this game is not for you. I have to say that <clears throat> it is it is crazy that you're just spinning around in space and you see glimpses of the planet or whatever you're near and all the stars and stuff and you never get a sense of um, what's north, south, east, and west. Um, it's it, it gets a little topsy turvy and then after that we show some multiplayer, which is even crazier because it splits screen in half and um, you know you, you really don't know where you're at. Yeah, I I gotta say it does. It is like the same system as some of the later games, like Encounters in Space, but this one actually seems to work better, which, you know, I, I find it kind of odd that as these games got, you know, older, you know, the system, the, the newer games, they just seem to get worse and worse. I mean, the only series of Gundam games that have been any, really any good have been uh, the Battle Assault series, maybe Never Ending Tomorrow. Uh, with maybe the exception, if you're willing to look past some things, uh, the latest one, um, Crossfire on the PS3. Um, but other than that, I mean, for being a PS1 game, mixing in uh, the hand-drawn animation along with the 3D graphics, this doesn't quite look that bad for it. I mean, honestly, in some sense, it almost looks better than some of the PS2 games that were released later on. I, I will say it definitely holds up in most respects, um, and, and the little the little like animated sprites that come in, <clears throat> the little ad, and you know how they did that, especially like the little intro there while you were talking, like they show the cockpit, you know that whole thing. I really like that. So here we get to gameplay, just a couple seconds after that, and I'm gonna tell you this first battle was pretty hard. I had to, it took me a couple tries to get used to it. Um, basically, you encircle your enemy. Um, you move left, they move right, you know, or, and so on and so forth. 
Um, there's not a lot of, there's no, you, you won't be stopping at any time. You're always going to be flying around and you, you might start to see where I was talking about it being kind of crazy. Uh, just the cameras going everywhere as you're targeted on your one particular enemy. Um, <clears throat> you have three weapons, um, as a, at least at least towards the intro of the game and multiplayer. Um, at this point, I have the beam, um, you have the cannon, and you have uh, the head cannon, which I couldn't figure out how to use effectively. Uh, actually, you had one <coughs> more weapon that I didn't see you switch to, which was the beam javelin. Ah. Um, yeah. Though I can't see what you said would be in this battle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, other than that, you stuck with the beam rifle, which tends to run out of ammo pretty fast, but it does recharge. I should, I should say that you probably want to use your beam, sword, or weapon, a melee weapon, more than your gunfire, because, as Timmy said, um, you lose ammo, there's not a lot of ammo, and I spent so much time just, um, running out of ammo, I mean, you only got, like, for that one weapon, I only had, like, 11 shots, something like that. Yeah, because, I mean, when, when you're using the beam rifle, you have to be at a certain distance, otherwise you're just gonna miss. I mean, out of three shots, you might hit one, just because of, like, the speed and, you know, the way the camera keeps shifting. Yeah, you well, also you also notice that, um, things, it, it, you'll notice that it keep on getting a lock, like a heat seek lock or something like that. Still, about the only time that any of the gunfire or any, um, you know, ranged weapons are effective. Beams are okay, um, it becomes timing, you know, as you notice I keep on coming in and then I'll swipe and... Uh, unlike the computer who can come in and do a combo like he just did to me at any goddamn time he wants, you'll spend a lot of time racing toward him, boosting with X. Uh, X is what causes the, the main boost and then just trying to swipe at him at the right time. <clears throat> um, and then you can lose weapons, you can lose parts of your body, like right here, I lost my head. <laughs> <laughs> my head. Um, I think the, the armor damage is pretty m a, pr a pretty nice touch. Um, yeah. Even though it doesn't really seem to affect anything. Um, well, the shield, you definitely... I lost the shield. Well, yeah, I mean, point. the shield, okay, yeah. But, I mean, like, when you lose a head, I'm sure if you lost a leg or something, it's not really going to affect your agility or anything like that, like yeah. uh, the newer games. But, uh, I mean, it's a nice touch for, for something like this. Yeah, <clears throat> especially... It, it, it would... Um, it's effective. It's definitely effective. Um, and you spend most of the game doing stuff like that, um, you know, fighting against one-on-one, -on -one, one major enemy type, and um, gameplay-wise, it's pretty much the same. You just use different units, and they have different weapons and that, you know, that kind of thing. And <clears throat> I like that they they added these uh, these fully animated scenes. They um, they really add to it. Just float in space. Time clear. Critical attack. You find durability. I'm, I'm, I think that means how much I lost armor-wise. I guess maybe what was left. Maybe because <coughs> I, I believe you can upgrade them. Yeah. At this point, um, Tim and I are playing. This we actually went right into multiplayer, so we really didn't know the controls. I'm playing as first player and Tim uh, second. Yeah, I kind of, on the first round, I chose the wrong Gundam because I hit the wrong button. Uh, your Bobby's playing the new Gundam, which is from Shars Counterattack. It's the uh, newer model with, uh, uh, I'm just going to call them sentry turns. Oh, no, the funnels. Funnels, funnels. yes. Yeah. I'm sure there's a way to activate those, which he didn't quite figure out. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, this is... I mean, it's pretty good. I thought I was starting off pretty well, being I was, you know, hitting him quite a bit. I thought I was ahead, and somehow I die. Yeah, you notice, you notice I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm kind of shooting blindly, thinking, well, I'll get him. Actually, this is, after watching single player versus you and my, me right now, it's not as crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that is true. Yeah. But we were pretty much just, you know, circling each other. We weren't. Yeah, we were trying to figure it out. And you well, I kept trying to figure out how to get close to you. I, I, I hadn't quite picked it up yet. Because we actually, we started playing this before you played the single player. Yeah. Yeah, this, is just, this, definitely, this definitely helped when I started playing the single uh, single player so I could uh, know how the controls worked um, somewhat. 
And at some point, I think I lose. I think I lose an arm. I think you took out my arm or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, you did. I really like that. I really like I, that. You can, you can. That's why I was confused as to how I lost because. Yeah, see right there, you got rid of my shield, which I was because you can hold the shield button, which is circle. Uh, but I start coming back with the with the gunfire. And then it really comes to, like I said, it comes down to boosting in and, and swiping at the right moment. If you swipe at the wrong moment, someone can come in and really kind of counter and, and really hit you then. Um, you know what's kind of funny is we're in space and we're, arc we're, we're flying against each other, but the... the 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 ammunition is arcing like if we were in, in if we had gravity in the air <laughs> like a plane I just noticed that because if there was a space it wouldn't have like arced like it did <laughs> so that's not very realistic right there is it we're just going around swinging at each other hoping we'd hit each other and at some point we do um there's also, uh, I figured out a way accidentally how you could take um, am ammunition from your first, uh, from your third weapon and then add it on to um, your beam rifle. Because I, at some point I, I actually got it after I thought it was gone. I actually oh no, the beam work. rifles recharge after a bit. That's what happens. Oh, I thought it was that. Well, you're right. You're probably right. Yeah, no, no. I, I watched you when you were playing the single player because that's how I figured it out. Because I had even run out. But then after a while, I switched back and I hit it, and it fired. So okay. it, it it recharges after a while. It's not like uh, you know, like battle assault. Once you're out of ammo, that's it. Um, Are these nuclear Gundams too? Uh, I believe so, actually. Yeah, I I, I got I got kind of lucky there. Because you know. as far as being nuclear, the whole it depends on like what. Uh, what storyline you're going by because like the Gundam one the Gundam Wing ones are nuclear, the 00 ones are solar, uh the 0083 one there is one nuclear Gundam. Gotcha. The seed there's a nuclear the the nuclear powered ones are like the later suits. There there's all kinds of different ones when it comes to that. I mean, it just depends on the core. But also like I said it depends on series. Um, probably the most interesting, if you're going to go that route, the most interesting would be the Double O Gundams, uh, which actually is an import game I really want to get called Gundam Meisters. Um, it's a fighting game one, and that one looks pretty good. I wish I would have picked that one up when I was there. Um, so basically from a control perspective, um, I'll be honest with you, they all feel the same from what I've noticed flying wise, um... Everything actually, flying and attack. There's almost, there's almost no difference between them. Um, they all fly similarly. Um, they might have different stats um, from you know attack and defense perspectives. That I can't tell you. I I'm only guessing at that point. But um, if you were to pick one up, it doesn't really matter which one. They all, almost all are pretty much the same. Um, from what I could tell. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, being I switched suits here for the second round, um, I I mean, I was playing exactly the same. I mean, it didn't feel or seem any different switching, you know, firing. It, it, it They do. They all feel generic. Um, matter of fact, I mean, to me, the armor and all that didn't even seem like... Uh, it didn't even seem like it was any different either as far as stats-wise. Um, I know you take me out a little quicker... A, a lot quicker here, yeah. but you had also picked up on how to play it a lot quicker than I did. Yeah, so. I, I figured out how to dodge. You hit uh, L2, and they kind of you go into the lower plane, like a slight lower plane of angle, which allows you to deflect a lot of the gunfire as it's coming at you. Uh, you got to do it at the right time, otherwise you, you're vulnerable. But uh, I was coming in with the right swipes, and it uh, it was starting to become second nature. Alright everyone, well, this was Gundam Shars Counterattack for the PlayStation 1 import copy. Uh, we got plenty more coming. Please subscribe and let us know what you think. Thank you.